There are many ways to run Java on the Raspberry Pi um, to compile and run your application. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can do that with Gbang. Um, the goal is to make this LED blink and depending on the number of times this button is uh, pressed, uh, make the blinking a bit faster. Uh, it's the same example uh, which is already used a few times in the Pi4j project uh, because it's very easy to show different approaches. Now with Gbang there is no need to install Java or uh, do any compilation by yourself. Gbang will handle all that for you. Um, so um, let's move over to the PC and uh, make first an SD card for the Raspberry Pi so that we have an operating system uh, and then run the Gbang sample code. Okay, I have a small SD card for the Raspberry Pi. I have to put it in a holder for my PC and I have already the Raspberry Pi Imager tool already. Select this uh, SD card and you see I have the Raspberry Pi OS selected and since the latest version of the Imager tool you have this extra button that you can pre-configure some stuff like the uh, login password, uh, Wi-Fi network, uh, your keyboard settings. A lot of settings are available here and it makes it a lot easier to get started with your new Raspberry Pi as all these values are already there if you start uh, the port. Now burning this uh, OS to this card takes quite some time because it downloads it first and then writes it to this SD card. So let's um, move a bit faster now. And at the end you get the message that your card is ready. So just pull it out of the PC, put it in the Raspberry Pi and give your power, give some power to the board. And if this is the first time with a new SD card, uh, there are a few reboots. Uh, so first the SD card will be used to the max. So um, the operating system which is burnt on it is not using the full capacity and this is handled at first startup. Um, what I also do immediately with the new Raspberry Pi is enable the VNC uh, because uh, it makes it a lot easier from your PC to connect to your uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, work that way. I want to do this uh, because I have my other PC where I have both the website open and the VNC. Well, so we have this port. I do it this way because I'm a bit lazy to always connect new uh, keyboards and mouses to my Raspberry Pis. So uh, I can do everything from one PC. Now let's first check if Java is installed, but we just selected the default Raspberry Pi OS. This doesn't include any Java version, so Java is not recognized in the terminal. But Gbang can also handle this for us. So if we only install a Gbang, that's the only thing we need to do at this moment. Um, so it will download Gbang, install it, and Gbang will check if there's already a Java on the system. There is none, so it will install the default one, which is JDK 11 at this moment. Uh, again, it needs to download it, install it, so okay, it takes some time. And now if we check uh, if there is a Java, Oh, we don't get a Java, but that's because, and actually it's uh, illustrated here in, in the terminal, uh, you have to open a new terminal because it's setting a path value and a path value is only becoming valid uh, if you reopen the terminal. So if you have a new terminal and Java version, now we see indeed we have Java 11. So that means that we can run uh, Java code. Uh, let's create a very uh, simple example in any programming language that is a hello world example. So we will do exactly the same. Uh, we create a Java file. So this is just a text file. We can do this with any text editor. Um, what you have to be careful about is this first line. This first line helps um, your system to run this Java code as a shell command and actually uh, start it with Gbang. Um, now, if you type gbang and this file, then it will be compiled to Java code and run on this system. Now, this step can also be done with normal Java. Since Java 11, you can run Java files without compiling them. Now, what is the big advantage of gbang? Uh, it provides a lot of additional features and one of them is um, getting dependencies. Uh, otherwise you would need a Maven project with a POM file or a Gradle project where you define these dependencies and they are downloaded and packaged into your application. 
but in this example we are using a let and a button with pi4j and pi4j is a dependency we need to run this code um, so in this in the beginning of the file there is defined that we need these dependencies for this pro program and now if we create again a new text file uh, on the raspberry pi and we copy this whole code block so you see in the beginning of this file these depths so it's defining which dependencies you need and which version now if we save this then we can try to run it again with gbang so it's just gbang and then the file name and you would expect it to work that was my id unfortunately it doesn't and we get an error um, and actually that's mo not a problem of gbang it's a problem of pi4j at this moment you still need sudo to run a, a pi4j project because uh, PyGPIO, the underlying native library which talks to the GPIOs, needs to be run as sudo. We are investigating how we can fix this, but at this moment you need to run your application with sudo. Now, there is a bit an issue because uh, we installed gbang as the Py user, so the default user uh, on this port. Um, so if you now run it as sudo, it will not find the gbang where it was installed as it was installed specifically for the pi user. Uh, and we can fix that by checking where gbang was installed. So if you do which gbang, then it will show you that this was installed in the home directory of the pi user. Now if we use this path uh, to run uh, gbang, so sudo the full path of gbang, and then the file name, then you will see that this program starts correctly. Uh, one disadvantage, it has to download the JDK again uh, because the JDK was installed for the Pi user and not for the sudo user. But again, this is handled by gbang and we don't need to care uh, about this. Voila, our LED is blinking. Um, we can use the button uh, to speed up the blinking speed. And if we do this five times, then the application will stop. Now there's even an easier way to achieve this. Um, if you combine this which gbang in our start uh, command, then it will actually look up where gbang is located and use that to start the application. GDK was already downloaded, so we don't do it. It's not happening again. And you see our LED is blinking as expected. Now all this is documented on the Py4j website. It's one of the possibilities of building and running a Java application on the Raspberry Pi to control the GPIOs. Check out the website and you will find a lot of useful information there.